Uh, hello and welcome to Scarborough Schools Roundtable. Uh, the purpose of these roundtables is to keep the community informed of the important work that's happening out there in the Scarborough schools. And I've invited key school leaders here to uh, sit with me this afternoon. And uh, we're going to be talking about the progress being made on our 18-month improvement plan. Uh, we've been monitoring the plan. We've been reporting out on a fairly regular basis to the school board. And I'm pleased to say that the progress that's being made in all of the schools is impressive. The improvement plan, as you know, was uh, the product of our first Scarborough Schools Community Dialogue that happened in October 2011. So we're just about 14 months into the plan. And a second community dialogue is planned for April 23rd of this year. I'll ask each of my guests to introduce themselves, and uh, I'll start to my left. My name is Barbara Hathor, and I'm the principal at the middle school. David Currier, assistant principal at the middle school. Hi, and Mary Dexter, principal at Wentworth Intermediate School. And Lovejoy, principal at Eight Corner School. Mike Legage, director of athletics and student activities. Dean Ariama, principal of the high school. Jen Mitchman, I'm director of IT for the town and the school. Okay, and we have just uh, enough time to really highlight the initiatives across the schools which will serve to be representative of the improvement work that's um, ongoing. Uh, we've printed out the sections of the plan that will help uh, guide our discussion today. Um, are we, we ready to begin? Okay. Um, we'll start with goal one, a good place to start, and a very important goal focused on world-class learning, and that is to provide world-class teaching and learning to ensure that each student is prepared to thrive in all the spheres of living. And I think we'll start um, at the K-2 level. Just and uh, the K-2 principles, Anne, identified exploring best practices and in technology integration aligned with defined 21st century skills. Well, I mean, what is that about? Well, that's a, a huge project that we've had this year. We've got new equipment, including iPads and projectors in, um, in every classroom, as well as uh, new laptops that actually work really well and are um, up to date, which is exciting. Kids are coming in, it's kind of funny, kids are coming in and not knowing how to use a keyboard because, or a mouse because all they do is touch screen. They all know how to use a, a smartphone or an iPad, but many of them don't have computer skills in the traditional sense, so we're learning that we have to step back a second and do those, although they learn them very quickly. But I think the exciting thing is, is with the projectors and the iPads and the computers that work when we need them to work, our teachers are able to seamlessly integrate technology into every subject matter, into every content area all day long without carting a cart down the hall, without hooking something else up differently, without any sort of interruption. Every teacher has what they need at their fingertips at all times. And I think um, the kids are also getting um, exposure to other pieces of technology. And, you know, there's so much out there <laughs> in the world that technology brings to the, into the classroom that exposes them to things that they'd never be able to see or do uh, without it. So it's just expanded everything we do in every way. And how are the students responding? Oh, they're so motivated. It's really exciting to watch them try something on an iPad that they might have tried to do with a flashcard before, and that was kind of old and mundane, but with an iPad and some fun sound or something, it's, it's all brand new and exciting. Kids are making a, a lot of progress with a lot of different kinds of technology in the classroom. <coughs> Great. Uh, World-class teaching and learning. Uh, the Wentworth Intermediate School identified uh, continued implementation <coughs> of a math curriculum and uh, focusing on the instructional quality in math. And Mary, why don't you talk a little bit about that? I, I have to say how important this has been for us. The um, math programming, the patterns that uh, children create in their thinking are part of what math is all about. And to uh, get a strong sense of number and to get a, a key understanding of those basic elements are critical. And if our students don't get those within our K-2 programming, within our 3-5 programming, then those elements can't be mastered or fostered in any way with the more um, uh, difficult concepts that they have when they reach the middle school. So one of the things that we've been, uh, our K-5 effort, but clearly to speak to the intermediate effort, has been a math and focus, which is our brand new uh, implementation of this of our math curriculum. 
this uh, program has been a very significant departure from our past programming because old programming was look at a book, look at numbers, do something with it, and report out. This programming has involved teachers teaching teachers. It has involved bringing in national consultants who have come in to actually work with us. And now, in our year and a half into the programming, we're actually able to now be the consultants in that our staff have developed wonderful skills, talents, and abilities to work with the children, but also to invite other school districts to come and see what we're actually doing in our school. Another significant part of this that we hadn't done in the past was we have actually had annual parent evenings. The evenings have been uh, designed differently. Instead of a sit and get, the parents actually are coming in and teachers are teaching them what the children are learning every day in school, using the materials and, and getting a, a good hang of what math is all about in this day and age, the kind of math that moves our kids forward. So I, I think it's... Uh, it's a thrill, and we're, see, we're really looking forward to looking at our pre-test data, making connections with the Common Core, all of those things that are essential to our being able to move these children from the kindergarten program right up through to our eighth grade math, mm -hmm. significant math program that feeds right into our high school. So are you on track with the uh, progress that you were hoping to make? We certainly are. I, I think we've found that uh, of the 34 classrooms that we have in our building, we're at full implementation for every single classroom at this point in the Great. year. And now we're looking to deepen that work and to look at the assessments more fully. That's great. Uh, moving to the middle school, uh, develop a language arts literacy plan that incorporates the Common Core. We do have um, a, another one of our roundtables is scheduled uh, in the upcoming months. Uh, one of them will focus on the Common Core. We talk about it a lot. I don't think that people necessarily understand it. Um, Barbara, maybe you can include a, a brief ex, uh, explanation of, of what Common Core is. But tell us about the, uh, the progress on the, the literacy plan. Well, understanding that the Common Core um, will be taking effect in, our, in the state of Maine in 14-15, um, we knew that we had a lot of work to do with our language arts curriculum. Um, we added the springboard materials to our curriculum which helps us align our work to the Common Core. And Common Core is a set of very rigorous standards. Um, and our students are doing a fabulous job meeting those standards. Um, the standards address reading, writing, speaking, listening, and media literacy that are aligned uh, to 21st century skills and knowledge. Um, my staff is doing a fabulous job. Uh, they're doing work with formative assessments, which is informing they, their teaching. Um, students are absolutely aware of what they're learning every day, and they, so their pathway to their learning is very clear. They know what is expected of them and what they have to master in order to, um, to meet the, those standards, those rigorous standards. So what's, a, what's the status of this language arts literacy plan? Um, it's moving forward very quickly. The teachers are working very hard. They're working on their own after school together. They are working during the day together. Their, their professional learning teams are, um, are very, they're very engaged in those PLTs to improve their own learning because these standards are so much higher than what they're used to. They are putting in a lot of preparation for our kids. And you made uh, some reference to PLTs or professional learning teams. Again, one of the upcoming round table, tables will focus on professional learning teams so that uh, we get a good explanation out there to the community about what PLTs are all about. Dean, um, at the Scarborough High School, the work has been around instructional and curriculum frameworks. Can you um, tell us about that? Sure. I, I think very much in line with what Barb said, uh, our main goal is to have the activities that the students are engaged in be aligned with not just standards within the local state of Maine, but also um, the nation or, if you will, the world. And uh, we all know that the Common Core State Standards are standards that are set for both uh, college and the workplace, that there really is no difference between the level of expectation of skill set or cognitive ability that students need to be able to perform in both either their choice of school or their choice to go right, right to work. So what the, the uh, instructional curriculum framework is, is a, is a document 
that basically explains to all teachers the components of how we're developing our curriculum. So that regardless of a department or a program, be it math or science or social studies, we're all working on common universal ideas, essential questions, key vocabulary, habits of mind. Um, so the teachers have been hard at work and working at components uh, of that. Uh, two of the main components being uh, common exams and the other one being common course frameworks. And how are, um, how are the students responding to the common exams? I think at first they were surprised that they were having the same exams that their peers were having. And what they saw right away was there, there was an automatic blanket accountability that regardless of the class you were in and regardless of the, the level of class, that there was a certain core amount of information that's tied to the Common Core State Standards, or at least that's the goal, that you're, you're going to thoughtfully be accountable for um, as you work toward fulfilling your, your um, needs to earn your diploma. So uh, I think it, it was interesting for them to have kind of like it level out and for them to be able to talk about, oh, we're all being tested on similar things regardless of who we have for class. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in general, that's, that is goal one. In general, we've only touched upon uh, pieces of the work that you're doing in each of the schools. Um, would you say that things are on target for, the, the, for each of your schools in, in terms of goal one? and, the, and the, uh, the work that you've taken on? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Teachers are doing a wonderful job. I think the staff are taking this very seriously, mm -hmm. and I, I certainly know we are in, in our efforts to move our system forward, and I think staff are very committed, and I think they're committed to their own learning, which is what makes it a deliverable product so that children will gain that much more. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, that's question one. That's question one. Guys. So if we're not in two and three, you can go. Huh? <laughs> 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 the round table gets <laughs> smaller. <laughs> Eric? <laughs> Did we do okay? Did we do okay? Yeah. Okay, anything that we need to do differently? Okay, goal, goal two, an important goal. Uh, let me read it. Ensuring a welcoming and inclusive learning environment that guarantees the safety of all school community members, fosters meaningful relationship building, and promotes the physical, social, and emotional well-being of all. Very lofty, uh, a big goal, and particularly important given some recent uh, developments uh, across, the, across the country. Uh, Let's, let's start with, um, again, uh, the primary schools and the community uh, supported a budget this past year that allowed us to restore uh, some, new, some services that were there previously that, are, that uh, uh, were lost uh, in budget cuts. Um, one of those, and a high priority for the K-2 principals, was uh, uh, the, the, the primary guidance curriculum piece. Uh, can uh, can you talk about that? The, the, the goal for K-2 was to develop and implement K-2 guidance curriculum aligned with the 312 program. In other words, uh, it's the, the sort of the prerequisite piece to the rest of the guidance curriculum. How's that going? It's going very well. We have um, been fortunate enough to hire somebody with 12 years of experience uh, at the K-2 guidance uh, level, and so she brings just a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of experience and knowledge to the position. Um, I personally, and I think we can all agree, that children don't learn no matter how old they are, what grade they're in, unless they feel safe, and unless they feel welcome, and unless they feel like they belong there. And I think 
<clears throat> that's what primary guidance is all about. It's not necessarily career exploration and what college are you going to go to at second grade. It's how do you get along in a classroom with 20 kids? How do you get along in a school with 250 kids? How do you then get along in a school that's bigger? How do you get in, along in your community? Um, and, and how do you learn to be an upstanding citizen? And whether that means good listening, uh, being kind to others, being respectful, being uh, safe, being resourceful, all of those things are included. And it's really um, the whole group lessons that the guidance is able to offer are just really valuable because it brings the school into a, a, a community where we're all using the same language, we're all using um, similar expectations. Is that expected behavior or unexpected behavior? Are you being safe? Are you being respectful? Are you being responsible? Those words are in every classroom every day, in every area of the school, hallways, classrooms, cafeteria, playground. So kids are really learning what it means to be a part of the larger community and how to learn and how to how to behave so that you can learn and so others can learn. And that's the key because when they need when they go up to higher grades and harder things, they need those skills. It's the um, everything I, that was important that I needed to learn, I learned in kindergarten. Exactly. Um, so, so it's a reintroduction of uh, guidance at the K-2 level. Are the schools feeling an impact already? I believe so. I believe that the um, level of experience that we brought into the program has helped because she was not, she was, even though she was new to the system, she wasn't new to guidance, and that made a big difference. She was ready to jump in in week one with classroom lessons. She's um, really worked hard to incorporate what we've already been doing and, and have been doing for the last four or five years before guidance was cut. She's really built on that and is trying to incorporate that into her, her curriculum and her knowledge base as well. So um, she's, she's done a really great job, and I think being in all three schools is a challenge. But um, she's, you know, it's really been a, made a big difference in our mm -hmm. schools to have that whole group thinking. Very good. Uh, following that same uh, theme, that same um, mode of, of, of thinking, uh, particularly around uh, that sense of belonging, um, and I'll just uh, move to, um, to the middle school. Uh, David, you've been very instrumental in creating the, um, the Connections program. And uh, the, the goal was uh, develop, implement an advisory program, which essentially Connections is. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Our goal of the Connections program is to have each student connected with more than one adult in our building. And we found that that's very important. It's a very important part, similar to, Anne, what you had mentioned as far as safety in the building, making the connection with the adults, and learning those skills that will help them transition through the middle school and into the high school. Mm -hmm. Um, what are what are some of the activities that have um, I know that uh, teachers have been encouraged to uh, think of uh, different activities to do with their, these groups of students that they have that they're basically building the relation the connections with? Um, what are some of the ones that have been most successful? Some of the activities that we have seen that have been very successful have been group collaborative games, uh, for example the. Uh, connections program would be set up with sixth graders in one group, seventh graders in another group, and so on. So they're each grade mm -hmm. grouped as grade level. And to be able to work with students that they normally wouldn't work with and teachers that they normally wouldn't work with has been awesome. Uh, but again, the activities have been collaborative activities that we've seen excellent work with. T team building team kinds building, of yes. activities. And, uh, and, and speaking of teams, uh, at the high school, Mike, um, I think we also recognize that uh, there's there's some some responsibility that we're this sense of responsibility that we're trying to um, build in, in in students and student voice um, respectfully um, having a voice in things that affect you uh, is is uh, one of those areas that we're that we're trying to build student skill and in athletics uh, which comes under the high school section here. Um, the goal was create a student <laughs> advisory council for athletics and activities uh, with the goal of enhancing student voice. Uh, can you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, um, I'm really excited to share, actually. I think this is a shining star for Scarborough because we've been a leader in our league. Our league, as you know, is called the SMAA. It's made up of 17 schools in western Maine. And um, Scarborough has been the school that has 
actually started a student advisory council for our league and was in two of our students were the founding participants of the statewide wow. student advisory council um, through the Maine Principals Association. As you know, the Maine Principals Association is one of the governing groups for athletics and student activities in the state. And so they started a student advisory council. Two of our students um, that attended a leadership conference in the summer uh, um, were, were the found, two of the founding people involved in the statewide group. We, it was through discussions with those students that we said, geez, we really should do something locally. Mm -hmm. And so Scarborough um, actually was the, was the students in the, in the school that started our, our league-wide. That's going to eventually morph into um, doing something within our school, too. Um, our, our involvement at the school level has been um, to get the whole thing started statewide and uh, our league-wide. But I think anytime you get students involved in their own learning, is a positive experience for them. And so this provides that opportunity. It provides students an opportunity to have a voice in the business of athletics and activities. And um, in fact, we just had our league meeting today and we talked about um, how that group is going to be extremely important in the in the day-to-day -day work of the league mm -hmm. um, in using them as a true advisory group to respond to certain things that we may even have questions about as adults and how that impacts students and their learning. So uh, would it be fair to say that uh, uh, creating the opportunity, students have stepped up to that opportunity to, um, to, to have a say, to have a voice? Absolutely. I mean, we have, we're, we're, we have two strong student leaders right now, um, and we have uh, each team, as you know, each program, as you know, has standout student leaders. We're very successful in our department um, between athletics and our activities. And so, consequently, we're very fortunate in Scarborough to have a lot of student leaders. Um, and all of them, we have many students that have stepped forward. So I think it's going to be an easy transition to con continue to have Scarborough lead kind of the parade, <coughs> if you will, of this initiative. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Okay, that's uh, Eric. That's goal number two, and and uh, we'll the, then we have goal number three next, right? Let me just get set up for that because I need to just. Do you want to stand up or take a break or just get through no, this? Let's get through it. Keep going. <laughs> Is it okay? We want the record of all the groups. Yeah. Pound it out. Ten bucks. Yeah. Speaking of pounding. What are the catchphrases we're going to use? Parade of activity. Listen to me. I haven't listened. You will be successful. I didn't even say state champion. Mm -mm. Yeah, we were all thinking it though. <laughs> of course yeah. we were. <laughs> That's where we got. We were all thinking it. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? Under, under our breath. <laughs> Sounds cool. Okay. We should just have like a little thing. <laughs> okay, goal three. I'll read it. Uh, develop in each student the skills for engaged citizenship, locally and globally, the insight and appreciation of one's own and others' cultures and the disposition to use individual talents to make positive changes in the world. Again, pretty lofty stuff. These are long-range goals. We tried to incrementally get closer, recognizing that that goal is always going to be bigger than, than where we land. Um, we'll, we'll start uh, at the Wentworth School, and let me just uh, pull that up here, Anne Mary. Uh, use current de developmentally appropriate activities, age appropriate activities, to expand opportunities to engage students and staff in service to the community, community service. And we talk a lot about it. Um, we had some interesting discussions about transactional, sort of raising money to give to such and such. Uh, versus interactional, which is using my skills and talents as a uh, as a f 
fourth grader maybe or as a high school student, whatever it may be, using my skills to make a difference in the world. And, and our focus has really been, yes, the transactional making money for certain things is good or collecting canned goods or whatever is good, but we also want students as best possible to recognize that they can use their skills and talents and make a difference. Uh, so what has been happening over at Wentworth in terms of community service? I, I, I'm pleased that you took the time to explain that difference because uh, many of the foundational activities that go on with young children are here's the goal, let's see if we can get mommy or daddy to come and help. <laughs> and oftentimes we're very successful in the young ages in getting that um, goal met, whether it's to stuff a bus or whether it's to collect mittens and hats. But when you really get to the bottom line of it, who is actually participating in that activity? And while we appreciate having parents fully engage and help their children to connect that lesson of we're giving something of yours to someone else, it really takes on a different level when the child does it by him or herself. So our staff have really been looking at that a little differently over this because of, frankly, the 18-month plan. Mm -hmm. it, it was to really analyze a little bit closer what is it that we really are doing and what is the benefit and how are children actually going to gain from this type of an experience. Um, I, I think I have a couple uh, different experiences that we've had at Wentworth that, to me, uh, embody this whole notion. Um, Hall School recently, for example, had a, a very sad thing happen to them because they had a fire and it wiped out hundreds of dollars worth of individual teachers, classroom materials. Books uh, were an essential element, that a core element that was gone. With our emphasis on looking at our reading program at Wentworth as well, our kids began to say, well, wait a minute. When one classroom, the idea sprung very naturally, shouldn't we get books for them? Well, not only did it take on the bring books in from your home, it took on a genre study where children actually looked at the type of book that they were going to contribute. So that was, it lended naturally to their learning. It also took on a categorizing, Skyping, writing letters and conversation, then actually taking a bus trip to the school, delivering, meeting the children, delivering the books, meeting the children, there was that ultimate connection from an idea to the full follow through for the children. 1,600 books. Wow. So that's a perfect example of how do we get our children to take activities that they're doing all the time and reach another part of our community. Um, another example we had was our storytellers, the children who have gone through, again, um, a notable process of learning for themselves. Then they have turned around, hopped on a bus, and gone out into the, uh, to our community, Scarborough community, and worked with the citizens, and actually worked with our seniors and told them stories. So Terrific. I think those are some examples of the type of thing that happens. Nice examples. And, and again, the transactional pieces are important to stuff the bus, uh, those, those uh, the, uh, warm coats for kids mm -hmm. without coats and so on, um, I, I think is terrific. But, but moving in the direction of interactional and, and uh, the Hall School in Portland, the example that you provided, um, r really moves into service learning because it was a, a service project that there was very active learning on, on uh, the part of our students. Terrific. Um, and uh, Jen, um, new uh, IT director, not only for the schools, but for the entire town. Um, I know from the perspective of the schools, a terrific uh, add to our team, and uh, we're so appreciative to have you. Um, can you uh, talk a little bit, um, there, there was a, there's a technology goal here, I'm not sure that you owned it because you were not here when, when it was, when it was uh, created, but the focus was to, from technology, to create virtual opportunities for communicating and collaborating with the community and I think that technology, we've come to realize, is so critically important to the way that we communicate with each other, how we work collaboratively, uh, how we communicate with uh, parents and to important stakeholders in the community. Um, thoughts or ideas that, uh, that, that you have in terms of that area? 
I think joining the school district really has been an eye-opening experience for me in terms of how integral technology is to the learning process. I think um, we've been trying to sort of meet the four C's of the technology in the 21st century plan. So collaboration, communication, creative thinking, and um, critical thinking. And I think the, the schools are doing some really fabulous things with the technology that's being put out there. I heard that there were a couple of classes, um, I think Anne Mary mentioned it, I know that um, in the Ant School they're doing this too. Um, they're using Skype to actually collaborate with some different towns to work on different projects. I think Gorm Schools was one of them. Um, I know with the iPads, you know, rolling the iPads out, that's been a huge benefit to the schools and to the students. There are some fabulous apps for education that are available out there. We are trying to move towards Google Apps, Google for Schools, um, to basically increase the collaboration that the kids can do and uh, try to share all of their work. So I think mm -hmm. we're moving in that direction. It's terrific. Well, in a, sh in a very short period of time, uh, you've been an important, uh, you've become a very important contributor. I, I know that you've worked with some of the professional learning teams. Mm -hmm. um, anything that you want to say about that work? Um, one of the things that we're working on right now is, uh, it's a fabulous project at the high school that one of the PLTs is working on, is actually filming um, some students from a math class who are problem solving, and then they tape that, they edit it, and then they load it to YouTube, and so students who are at home who are having trouble trying to solve the problems can actually log on to YouTube and they can get help from their peers. So we've tried to help out with that by providing the technology to um, not only film it, but also to edit it and um, help them post it. So that's been exciting for us. Terrific. Um, those are the three goals that I wanted to address in this first round table. The fourth goal uh, involves our connection with the community, and this is uh, part of uh, basically achieving that goal, is to create a, a stronger a link with the community to advise them about the important and the really good work that's happening uh, in the Scarborough schools. Um, I will offer a, a, a minute for any of you to uh, to talk about anything that that you wish to cover that I somehow didn't allow you to get to. Uh, Mike, any any thoughts about the 18-month improvement plan, the work that you have ongoing? I think we're real excited about the possibility of uh, professional development opportunities for our coaches and one thing that's going to be our focus moving forward is is to we have great coaches we have great club advisors we want to retain those folks and so how can we provide them some professional development opportunities for their own growth and development and so that's going to be a focus for our department moving forward that's great I was going to say at the K2 yeah. level that we're very excited about everything that's been going on but based on the 18-month plan, I think it's been exciting for all of us to have a vision and to have these goals and these targets to work towards as collaboratively and collectively. And it's made a huge difference in our focus at the building. And I think also that knowing that these ideas, though we have gelled them in a pattern that's made it work within our schools, I think the fact that they came from the community um, and the community was offered this opportunity is uh, a very important element to this being successful. Agreed. I'm very excited about the, the common threads that we have weaving throughout each school and the fact that a lot of our ideas have come from the community and we have worked together to move our schools forward. And I think Ann Mary mentioned this, but I'm very proud of the staff because they have owned this entirely. They're working very hard and they're very focused and I'm very proud of them. I think as a parent of a child who has moved on from kindergarten and is now in high school, I've, and being new here, I'm so impressed by the level of the staff, the dedication of the teachers and the principals and everybody who's involved in terms of taking our kids through the entire system. And the dedication to the 18-month plan, the fact that you guys really took seriously the feedback that was coming back from the community. And I'm just I'm happy to be involved. And, and I know Dr. Entrance is going to talk about it in the future, but today being a late start date and having the chance as a principal to walk around and see 
one of numerous professional learning team conversations and just watching the teachers interact with each other. And some of them are actually getting to the point of implementation or some of them have moved beyond implementation are talking about the little qualitative or quantitative data they've gathered and kind of problem solving how the students are now reacting to their in classroom, not experiments, but trial and error situations is very fulfilling, I think, as, as a school leader. And, and I know that's having an impact on the classroom as well, that that energy and that excitement that's created by the collaboration of that group is having an impact. And, and I think that the second piece is just the, the, the energy that comes from our students. We all can, can share that, that, that while we're really proud of our staff and they're working very hard, uh, we know that our students, our student athletes, they give us back 10 times. Um, what we're able to invest in them, and that's really energizing and, and very exciting to be a part of. Well, and it's uh, it's exciting for me to uh, work with a team that has really dedicated themselves uh, to the 18-month plan, to the improvement. Uh, you all uh, developed the plans for your schools and uh, and were ambitious. Uh, the great news is that uh, that ambition has really paid off. There's been tremendous. Uh, improvements uh, that that uh, we can see um, across all of the schools, across all of the departments, and, and so it's a pleasure uh, as a relatively new superintendent um, to uh, work with a team that has dedicated themselves uh, in such a way. Uh, just a reminder that uh, the 18-month plan did come from the community dialogue, the second community dialogue again for members in the community and all stakeholders, all members of the community are invited to attend and that will be April 23rd, uh, 2013. So we're looking for, we had 400 this, uh, in uh, 2011. Let's say uh, we shoot for 600 uh, participants uh, in 2013. Okay, there we go. State so what did you, um, are we all set? Yeah, do you guys want to do a closing segment? Like, on that time? That was it. Um, <laughs> 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 that was kind of it. But, uh, next time we'll do a closing segment. Is it, is it okay the way it is? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Eric. Um,